Good afternoon. Welcome to Sandoval Island. The field trip right here in sunny Southwest Florida. Sandoval Island is an island off the coast of Fort Myers, three miles off the coast. You take a three mile bridge off the mainland of Fort Myers to get here. And we're approximately about a tenth of a uh, mile to the beach right here. And uh, in relation to the mainland of Fort Myers is over in that direction about uh, about nine miles. So we're about nine miles out to sea right here. Well, I'm going to show you some things that are quite fascinating. I wanted to start right here in this spot before going to the beach, because what you see here is, um, I want to talk a little bit about our soil. As you can see, we have um, seashells all the way up to this point. And even if I go further up, you could see that at one point this was underwater about 200 years ago. And right now, uh, as I, where I stand, you could see how there is uh, plenty of uh, seashells from thousands of years ago that have come up this far. Okay, so I wanted to start here to give you a little bit of the horticulture. Right now I'm in the middle of uh, an area where there's some dunes. And I'm not sure if you know that uh, the importance of seagrass and dunes, but they actually help slow the wave activity from a, on a barrier island. And when there's a barrier island, there's always a bay or a estuary. So right now we're facing the west and on the other side of the island, the east, is what we call uh, the Ding Darling Estuary. Well, it's a, a preserve and it's a 6,400 acre preserve and it's on the San Carlos and Tarpon Bay, which then reach to the mainland. So we've got quite a distance between uh, the mainland here and then uh, oh, the mainland, the bay, and then here the part of the island that faces the, the Gulf Coast. Okay, so let's take a trip down. We definitely have a lovely day here. So here's some sea oats, as you can see, sea oats. I mean, the shell activity into the soil all the way up into, even three miles up into the uh, center of the island. It's pretty amazing when landowners uh, in the backyard, they plant gardens, they pull up shells. <laughs> so that's quite fascinating. So here we are now. We are at the Gulf side of the island, right? approximately 13 miles of beach all along. We're at low tide. And then that to the north is Captiva Island up there, Captiva. So you've got the northern part of the island is Captiva. Our southern tip of the island is that way where the lighthouse is, okay? The main thing I wanted to point out here is how was this island formed? So geologists say that we're on the Florida, uh, the uh, shelf line, all the Gulf Coast is the shelf line. And the shelf running from the peninsula of uh, the northern of um, Pensacola all the way down to uh, Naples, Marco Island. And it's a very low, uh, it's more of a shallow shelf line. The uh, interesting thing is, is that uh, This shelf system, uh, 6,000 years ago, they say the island was created through the wave activity of just pouring up the, uh, the sediments from the uh, ocean. And what we are in Florida here is mostly limestone. We mostly have solid limestone. And the island is, uh, has a lot of, the mineral is mostly uh, accumulated carbonate sedimentary. So it's 
Uh, our beaches and our sand come from the quartz that have uh, sedimentation that has come down from the great rivers and flown into the Gulf of Mexico. Another important thing to speak of here is that the uh, sediment rose from the sea after being sloped by uh, centuries of sediment of storm activity. So the barrier islands are typically formed from waves repeatedly depositing sediment uh, parallel to shorelines. And they, they're separated by, uh, from mainland by bays and estuaries. The beaches act as a dune system as we showed you with the uh, seagrass and the um, uh, sea oats, okay, because they help reduce the uh, wave activity. And the whole idea of the barrier island is to protect mainlands and flooding on the coast. The Florida shelf slope system of uh, the entire west coast of Florida is a low gradient. And that uh, is where the carbonate sedimentary uh, has accumulated. The earliest wave action here on Sanibel was discovered over 3,000 years ago. So that's how they know that uh, it, it was uh, within that time frame. And geologists say that the area of right now as they're looking in the future it's very critical um, to know that these barrier islands they're hit by storms or um, uh, the continual erosion of low sand sediment over time that's important to know that in the rising sea levels that these barrier islands may not be what they are to uh, in the future and lastly, I just wanted to say that the, um, the interesting part I think I mentioned was the, the island went, what was uh, underwater over 200 years ago. That means the sea levels did rise and overtake the island. And uh, geologists are saying that that could happen in the future. So do you buy real estate on the island? That's the big question. It is <laughs> uh, interesting that more than 50 years ago, you couldn't get a piece of land. We could get a piece of land for a dollar because of the mosquito population. And now today it's uh, <laughs> changed quite a bit. Anyhow, this has been a great presentation and taking you to the backyard of Sanibel Island here. And once again, because it acts as a big shelf here and it juts out three miles from the mainland, it acts as a, a great shelf for collecting shells. And that's why you see so many shells here and people come from all over the world to shell because you've got this big shelf system coming up from the entire eastern uh, Caribbean or western Caribbean and through the Bahamas and then the shells just come right up through here. So I hope you enjoyed this field trip and I look forward to, to uh, sharing more with you.